What I regret the most about what happened with Daily Class is that I thought I was coming back. Hola, Maria. So nice to be talking to you today. Hola, Lupe. So nice to be talking to you. Thank you for having me. Sure, no problem. Well, congratulations on the Moody Season 2. Yay! Yay! Thank you. We're so excited. <laughs> And, you know, what is like, it's such a great cast, Elizabeth Perkins, Dennis Leary, Jay Baruchel. I mean, it's a ton of people and they're all great and it's all funny. And, you know, what's it like? Wow, it's nerve wracking. <laughs> During the first season, I remember being really, really nervous because I got there a little bit late. They cast my role last i think so when i got there they were all already familiar with each other and they loved each other and they had created this little family so i got there feeling a little bit like an outsider but that was also cora's um situation with the family she was the outsider she was new in it so it worked perfectly and this season with covid and all the restrictions that mm. we had um it was amazing because we really got to create that family that works so well on the screen, of the screen. Um, we found ways to connect with each other. And to me, it's still really surreal to call these people my colleagues. <laughs> I, 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 I admire them so much. I grew up watching Elizabeth in every movie and wishing that I could work with her one day. So, I, I had this exercise every day before going to set that I had to like sit down and remind myself that this is a blessing and this doesn't really happen that often mm -hmm. and that I have to enjoy it and appreciate it. Um, so I'm just, I'm just freaking grateful. And more than that, uh, this season is so special and so great. It's not only that I'm working with amazing, talented actors, um, we're doing something really special too. Yeah, and yeah. this season, uh, you're going to have some trouble with Dan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, I can't, you know, we can't say what, what happens, but I'm sure that was fun to play with, the fact that, you know, they're, go they're going through some things. <laughs> yes, it's so good because, and I think it's so real, but because um, when you go into a relationship, sometimes you think that everything's going to be lovey-dovey, and it's not. Mm -hmm. you, you go through phases of doubt and fear and anxiety and you have to get through them and that only makes you and your couple like stronger so that's something that I really loved mm -hmm. and Francois and I had a great chemistry and we really like each other so we really enjoyed uh playing those situations that were kind of tricky and and it ends up in the best way so you have to watch the whole season because it's just it's it's like a surprise yeah and it's funny when i was watching the show i was like this is a Latino family because everyone's a metiche, like the tios, the tias are all in there. I mean, yes. <laughs> right? And, and, and that's something that I love about the show. It's the universal language of love and family. <laughs> and I'm Venezuela and I'm like, Jerry D, this character, oh my God, Uncle Roger <laughs> has always given you directions and telling you how, how to get somewhere. I'm like, yes. That's what we have. Okay, it's not only Latinos. You know, they do it too. Uh, so it's really fun for everyone to watch. And, um, you know, of course, a lot of the fans were disappointed with Deadly Class was not, was not returning. But I'm sure that this launched like a whole new opportunities for you because I think Deadly Class was your first major American um, project, yeah. right? So, I mean, I'm sure it opened doors for you and people are like, oh, let's get that girl. <laughs> Well, I, I think so. And I hope so. I, it was heartbreaking for me. And again, like going into our relationship, you think it's going to work out and it's going to be perfect. And I had all these expectations of how I was going to do that show for years and years and it didn't happen. And I, I went into a really heavy moment in my life, like trying to understand, you know, you start thinking, is there something wrong with me? Like, what did I do that it didn't work out? Um, but at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason. And it definitely made me stronger. And it made me appreciate what I have way more. So that's why when I go to set with the Moody's, I don't take it for granted. So um, 
yeah, it was heartbreaking, but it gave me the Moody's and it gave me this opportunity to work with these fantastic people and to be on a show that I feel so proud of. So it's good. And that's the heartbreaking part about working in Hollywood is that, you know, when you do a TV show, you hope that it goes for a very long, a lot of, a lot of seasons, but then when they cancel it, you're like, it really hurts. You know, I feel for people that's like, oh man, they canceled their show, especially if people really like it. It's awful because, and, and, and mostly because you, you, you create a family. And, and what I regret the most about what happened with Daily Class is that I thought I was coming back. So I didn't, I didn't hug them the way I would have if mm. I would have known. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get to, I didn't experience it fully because I thought I had a second chance. You know, I, I didn't go out to every party. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I know better now. And that's why I say that, you know, it all happens for a reason. But now, and with the pandemic as well, like now I enjoy, I make sure that I live my life, that I enjoy every moment, that I look at people in the eye because you really don't know if you're gonna see them again. Well, that's a great uh, thing about this role because it's such a contrast to what you did before. So you have the action down and drama and now you have the comedic side here. So what was it like for you entering a, a, a sitcom? Not, it's not a sitcom, it's a comedy. It's a family drama comedy, but you know, well, it's a different thing. The different is. beast and i'm and i'm used to drama and this has a very specific like tempo so all of those pauses that you would do if you're doing a drama you can have them here mm -hmm. um so you have to kind of speed it up a bit and it's fun it keeps you on your toes and it gives you opportunities to improvise so i've learned so much but i've also learned to trust myself because when you're there you kind of have to let everything else go and be in the present moment and trust that this joke that just popped up in my head is gonna work you know so i'm just gonna go and say it and if they don't like it they won't use it um, it's definitely a different format that's taught me a lot now, I wanted to ask you, as a Venezolana in Hollywood, what has it been like? I mean, I've heard horror stories where people just want to give you a certain type of, or, or you don't look Latina enough, or if you look Latina, it's like, okay, you play gangster, and can you give me an accent? I mean, I've heard all kinds of horror stories. So for you, what's it been like? Uh, it's been a little bit like that, for sure. I remember uh, when I first got here, um, I, I, you know, I've been a professional actress since I was five years old. So when I got here, I thought people were going to give me jobs just because. <laughs> and it didn't happen. But it also happened that when I got into the room and they liked me, they would tell my agent, yeah, but you know, she hasn't done anything in, in, in English. So like, we don't know if she's going to be able to do it. Um, and I keep, kept thinking, so who's going to give me the first opportunity? Like <laughs> somebody has to, like, there's always a first. So mm -hmm. give me the first opportunity so I can show you that I can do it. But it was so hard because people, we talk about diversity a lot and mm -hmm. we talk about um, feminism and we talk about empowerment, but it's a lot of talk. You know, being really open to diversity takes a lot of work and less chit chat. Mm -hmm. And to me, this show is really special because I was never put in a box. The, the role was meant for an American. They wrote the role for an American, like, I don't know, from Kansas, definitely not me. But when I got into the room, they were able to put my accent and the way that I looked and my nationality aside and see, see, my, see me. And that's that I think that's all it takes to, to be really open to diversity means to stop putting people in, the, in boxes. And that starts with your characters, you know, when you're writing them, when you're creating a show. Um, let's try to find the best person for the job. Doesn't really matter how they look like or how they speak. And, and because of this show, my experience has changed drastically. Like uh, now I know that there are people out there, big names that are willing to really be open and, um, and, and be richer and, and, you know, have a better show and a better product because of that real diversity. They didn't hire me to check a box. They didn't hire me to say, look how diverse we are. They hired me because they thought I was the best person for the job. And that's all I ever want in, in life. And I hope that 
the industry gets there at some point. Yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about your role in this in the show is that um, they don't explain away why he's <laughs> Dana Venezolana, you know, because a lot of times they have to explain it or they have to put some kind of drama or spin to wow. it. And it's just like, no, people have accents and people meet every day. It's love, you know, laws of attraction. It doesn't matter, you know. So that's what's nice about it. They don't, they don't point, except there's a joke where uh, uh, Dan is sleeping alone and he's depressed. And the, and the brother says like, well, of course, yesterday you were sleeping with the, you know, a very hot Latina or Venezolana. And today you're waking up by yourself. Of course you're depressed. <laughs> I, I love that and that's how life is and you know that's how Bob's and Rob's and, and Tad's lives are and and they show that you know they're able to write from reality which is very diverse and you don't have mm -hmm. to explain to people all the time that you're Venezuelan and, and you know oh by the way I'm not from here oh by the way my family is no 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 you just go about your day and you talk to people and you connect in different ways so I want to ask you, um, aside from this project, like what is your ideal role? Like what do you hope, or maybe, you know, in the future, you'll, you'll um, do it yourself. For a lot of actors, they start a production company because they're not getting the roles that they want. Even ac Anglo actors, they don't get the roles they want, especially women. Which I think is fantastic because it gives you, from those challenges, from those limits that the industry gives you, you're able to say, fuck it. I'm gonna grow from it and I'm gonna become a producer, become a writer and experience a whole different part of yourself. I am definitely starting to do that. Um, not from a place of lack, not from a place of, oh, Hollywood is mean and it's not giving me jobs, but because I wanna, I wanna be able, I wanna see what I'm able to accomplish, um, not only as an actress, but as a writer and a producer. Um, my dream role would be Villanelle from um, Killing Eve, the role of Jodie Comer. Oh my God, she's amazing. And it's such a complex character. Of course, she's, she's, she's getting all the awards because she's amazing. And that's something that I, I watch that show almost every day, a little bit of it, because it makes me feel like, ah, oh, that's what I want to do. Yeah, those those roles are like the best ones ever because when you have, especially when you pit woman against woman, that's like really great. So fantastic. Yeah. Well, congratulations on all your success. I'm gonna keep watching to see what happens in that relationship. Fingers yes. crossed. Gracias por esta entrevista. A ti también. Muchas gracias y buena suerte. Gracias igual. Hasta luego. Bye.